Bless you, beloved. This is Pastor Ray Berryhill here, and welcome to Resurrected Life TV. I'm so very thankful that you've joined us today, and we have an exciting word from the Lord. Now, at the end of the broadcast, don't forget to visit our website for the latest information about the exciting things that are happening here at Resurrected Life Church. Please feel free to contact us or to participate in any of our events because all of these activities have been created with you and your family in mind. We believe in reviving souls, restoring families, and renewing communities. So let's go into today's message. You know, I'm a man of God, but I'm also a black man. And I just can't help but, but feel a certain way when you keep shooting folks every day. I say it every day. I can't help but feel a, a certain way because I've come to this, I'm sorry if I'm bleed on you all this morning. I hope you can take it. I used to think we could educate ourselves out of this. I used to think we could be of a certain economic status. I used to think that if you lived in certain neighborhoods, you'd be okay. But now I realize None of that matters. And so for all of you who have a problem with Black Lives Matter, one, your pastor is black. And we're not saying nobody else's life matters. We're saying our lives matter too. That's what it's about. God's going to judge wickedness. And while I don't want to see anybody hurt, you keep on bullying people, there are going to be consequences and repercussions. Look, if you put me on YouTube, put the whole thing there. I am not advocating violence. I don't want to see nobody get hurt. But if you back a cat into a corner, you gonna get it. God will judge wickedness. Are you all hearing me today? And I wanna tell some of you who are of a little lighter hue, you don't get away either. I used to think because I had good hair. <laughs> I got a pass. <laughs> Let me move on. <laughs> Amen. Listen, you all know I love you. I don't have an axe to grind. This is a wonderful multicultural church. I love everybody. But if there's injustice with any of us, there's injustice for all of us. All right. Y'all point to the pastor and say, Lord, help the pastor. Let me move to the next point. I, I just had to get that off. You, you know, not too long ago, Adrian and I were driving down 94. And we had the grandkids in the back seat. I'm driving around 60, 70, and this car comes behind me, pushing me, if you will. So I speed up, and he's riding me. So I speed up, and now I'm doing a little better than 80. Then the lights come on, and I realize it's the police. 
So I pull over and I say, Officer, is there something wrong? And he said, as he flashes the light into the car, he says, you were driving too slow. I didn't even correct him. I just looked at Adrian like. I knew he stopped me because I was doing 80. He said, you're driving too slow. You were in my lane. His lane. He says, this is the lane that I try to catch people who are doing 80 and 90 degree, uh, 80 to 90 miles per hour, and you were in that lane. He said, so I'm just going to give you a warning. I looked at Adrian when I rolled the window up. I said, I'm so glad my sons were not driving this car. Do you hear what I'm saying? Had it been a younger black man... He looked over and he saw Adrian, and when he saw Adrian, he knew we were old. <laughs> Wait a minute. Catch this, please. saw my grandkids in the back, you know, you might have saw my bald head. I don't think he saw that. I think I had a baseball cap on, but anyway, the long and short is there was no reason for me to be pulled over. Didn't get a ticket. I got a warning, and now I don't know what to do. <laughs> he said I was driving too slow. So how fast should I drive now? 95? All right, I got that off. God will judge the wicked. God will answer prayer. God will judge the wicked. My last point and I'm done. God will restore his people. Now, if you didn't shout at all today, that's your shouting point. Right there. Put a praise on that. God will restore his people. I have an announcement to make. Restoration, not judgment, is the final word from the Lord. Did you hear what I said? Restoration, not judgment, is the final word from the Lord. Huh. Beloved, all we like sheep have gone astray. Look at your name and say, Judea too. Everybody's messed up. Everybody's gone the wrong way. Everybody did their own thing. But even when we stray away, God promised he would restore us. David said, he restores my soul. Whew. And so in this text, I don't have time. Read it when you get home. God gives five wonderful promises between verses 6 and 14. And he says to all those who put their trust in him, is there anybody in here who trusts the Lord? To all them who put their trust in him. First, he promised to bless them again. He promised to heal them again. He promised to restore them again. He promised to rebuild them and to forgive them and to cleanse them from all their sin and rebellion. Now, I don't know what that means to you. But what that means to me is I got some stuff in me I don't even realize I got. And God will forgive me and cleanse me from that too. So that the devil can find nothing in me. Am I talking to anybody in here? And so this is the part I like. And, I, and I'm, I'm just about done here. He says, look, Jerusalem has been messing up for a long time. They've been sinning from their youth. But you know what? I'm going to make Jerusalem strong again. They're going to have peace again. They're going to have joy again. They're going to have abundance again. They're going to have prosperity again. Hallelujah. Now, I want you all to help me preach. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you've been messing up a long time. But God said, you're going to be strong again. 
you're going to have peace again. You're going to be healed again. You're going to have abundance again. You're going to have prosperity again. And if you believe that, I want you to jump on your feet and give God a shout of praise in this place. <laughs> Hallelujah. God's going to restore his people. He's not going to leave you where you are. He's going to fix you. He's going to heal you. He's going to deliver you. Somebody say, yeah. And now instead of other folks laughing at you, they're going to have to praise God and say, look what the Lord has done. Nobody can do it but Jesus. Somebody say, yeah. Woo. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. I, I, I just got one or two more things to say to you. The end of your story is not judgment. It's restoration. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I'm about to be restored. The thing I love about God is he will speak judgment over your life. But if you repent, he'll take it back. All he wants us to do is get right. That's all he wants. And so he says, if I command the locusts, is that what he said? He said, if I command, command the locusts to devour the land, if I told heaven to shut up, that there'd be no more rain, if I send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked way, See, we missed that last part. You got to turn. In other words, you got to go another direction. Can't keep on doing what you've been doing. Turn from your wicked ways. Then, will I hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin. I'll heal their land. Didn't he say it? So let me help you. I, I, I was talking to my son this week, and he was telling me about some things that he was going through. And I want to say, I said to him, I want to say to you, Beloved, if you're going through a negative period, don't worry about it because God never ends anything on a negative. <laughs> he always ends on a positive. At the end of the first day, he said, it's good. The end of the second day, he said, it's good. The end of the third day, he said, the end of the fourth day, he said, and we get all the way down. All God said at the end, it was good. So if where you are right now is not good, it's not the end yet. Just hold on because God never ends anything on a bad note. He's the alpha. He's the beginning. He's the first. Oh, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Can I get a witness in here? He was... He is he who was dead, but is now alive forevermore. How many of you know he sees the end from the beginning? And the thing I love about it is that he's made all things beautiful in his time. So if you don't like what you're looking at, you just keep on praying. You just keep on trusting. You just keep on fasting. You just keep on believing. You just keep speaking God's word. Because restoration is a benefit of serving God. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits to me. Who forgives all your sins? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from destruction? Who crowns you, satisfies you with loving kindness and tender mercies? He satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. I want to say to somebody, if you're in a negative situation, look for the positive because God is a restorer. 
I say God is a restorer. Every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain shall be made lower. The crooked way will be made straight up and the rough places shall be smooth. This is the part I like. And the glory of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord, the grace of the Lord, the favor of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. How do you know? Because the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Come on and give God a praise. I'm finished. I'm finished. No matter what you've done, your good thing is on the way. No matter what you suffered, your good thing is on the way. But you got to keep trusting him. You got to obey him. Look at your neighbor and say, come on, you got to live right. You got to seek him. You got to stand on his word. And God says, you don't have to worry about it. I'm going to perform it. I'm going to perform that thing I promised you. So if you're a sinner, he promised to save. You need forgiveness, he promised to forgive. If you're sick, he promised to heal. You're in trouble, he promised to deliver. If you don't have what you need, he promised to provide. Oh, I'm going to cover everybody in here. You've been forsaken, he said, don't worry about it. They left you, but I'll be with you. Enemies surround you, he said, I'll protect you. When you're weak, I'll make you strong. When you're burdened, I'll give you rest. When you're feeling hopeless, just remember this word. That good thing which I promised you. I'm going to perform it. So what's your response today? What is your response? The question is not, will God keep his promise? The question is, how are you going to respond to the promise? Did you hear what I said? How are you going to respond to the promise? Jesus revealed the promise. Jesus fulfilled the promise. And all he's asking us to do is receive the promise. You got to receive it. You got to believe it. Before it happens. Listen, it's easy to shout after God does it. But how many of you can shout right now? See, we miss it in church. You're waiting on God to do it. And God says, fool, it's already done. Now, I want you to put a praise on it, even though you can't see it. Oh, atalalabo. Even though you can't feel it, even though you don't recognize it, put a praise on it. Give them glory. Give them honor. Don't wait till the battle is over. You can shout right now. Hold on. Hold on. Listen. We're so used to shouting over singing. I wish I had about 20 people that can shout over the word. Shout over the promise. Shout because your good thing is on the way. Hallelujah. For some of you, uh, it's already happening. Hallelujah. By the time you get home, uh, by the time you get home, uh, it'll already be done. Uh, by the time uh, you're ready to give up, uh, God will uh, fill your cup. Yes, he will. I'm a sob. See, that, that's all y'all want me to do. I, I, I'm not going to entertain you. If I say it in a whisper, you need to shout. Don't shout because of a tune or a hoop. Shout because it's true. Now let me help you. Let me help you church folks. Stop. Stop. Sit down. 
This is the last thing I'm going to give you, and I'm done. Many of us have learned a church so well that we have church wherever we go. You go to the show and something happens and you be lifting your hands <laughs> at the show. Lifting your hands, watching TV. Beloved, you got to learn how to respond to the wooing of God. You got to learn how to respond to the move of God. Look, don't you forfeit your promise because somebody else didn't get theirs. Don't you stop thinking you're going to be healed because your Aunt Ludie Bell died. Don't forfeit your promise. Look at your name and say, don't forfeit your promise. Because somebody else failed to keep their promise. Because all the promises of God are yea and amen to the glory of God. Is that what it says? And so the only acceptable way for a believer, do I have any believers in the room? The only acceptable way for a believer to respond to the promises of God is to say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Say amen for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Say amen because you know it's so. Amen. Say amen because you know it's fulfilled. Amen. Say amen because you know it's already done. Amen. Say amen because you know your good thing is on the way. Amen. When God promises to heal, you say amen. When God promises to bless, you say amen. When he promises to deliver, you say amen. When he promises to protect, you say amen. When he promises to provide, you say amen. When he promises to guide, you say amen. When he promises he'll prosper you, say amen. 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 It is so, so it is. It's already done. Woo. That's right. While you on your way home, you need to be saying amen. Somebody in the car, they looking at you saying, what you saying amen? Cause it's already done, amen. Hallelujah, why you turn, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Hallelujah, everybody's standing. I'm finished. Hallelujah. I want you to lift your hands in this place. Lift your hands all over this building. Give me some deliverance music. Hallelujah. I want to speak it one more time. This is your year of fulfillment. I know you wanted it to happen before, but it's about to happen right now. Somebody say, this is my year of fulfillment. I want to speak to somebody. It seems like the gates of heaven have been closed to you. Seems like your prayers haven't been answered. Seems like you're hitting a, a ceiling. But I declare open heaven over your life. Open heaven. That that didn't come before is about to happen now. Open heaven. Your good thing is on the way. And all through everything you went through, God was behind the scenes, working it for your good. Listen, you've endured, listen to me. You've endured a new level of attack and, and you said, I, I don't even know why I'm being attacked like I'm being attacked. I, I don't understand what's going on, beloved. You're being attacked at new levels because you're about to enter into a new level of blessing, a new level of victory, a new level of favor, a new level of prosperity. Am I talking to anybody? Salvation for your loved ones, healing for your body. Your son is about to get out of jail. 
Your daughter's about to get married. Come on, God's going to give deliverance. God's going to give promotion. God's going to give increase. God's going to give surplus. There will be more enough, more than enough. You won't be going from paycheck to paycheck or week to week. God is canceling debt and eliminating debt. Provision, resources, qualified help. You said, I just wish I could get some help. God's about to send you the help that you need. For some of you, it's more tangible. You've been crying about your apartment, but God's about to give you a new house. Hallelujah. For some of you, it's a new job. For some of you, it's a new car. Don't you dare think God's not concerned about those things. For some of you, you're about to have a profitable, a profitable business. Multi levels of income. Mm. As you worship him, he's going to give you some million dollar ideas. Witty inventions. So get ready. Because your good thing is on the way. Your breakthrough is on the way. Your turnaround is on the way. Walls coming down. Mountains being moved. Obstacles being removed. The drought is over. The rain is on its way. And goodness and mercy. They're following you every day of your life. I speak, I declare, I prophesy to you your good thing. I said your good thing is on the way. If you believe it, I want you to give God the best praise you can in this place. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Let me extend an invitation. My time is up. Give yourself to Jesus. Can we do that? Sharon, come on. Listen to me. There's some of you here today. You're disconnected from God. You wonder why things aren't working right. It's because you're disconnected. Beloved, if you don't plug the refrigerator up, it can't cool your food. If you don't plug the microwave up, it can't cook your food. You got to get connected. Get connected. For some of you, that's asking Jesus to come into your heart. For some of you, it's just getting right back on track. You know what it is to serve God. Listen, you were raised in church. You were raised in Sunday school. You, you were raised learning, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. You were raised learning that. But somehow or another, you got away from it. And all God wants you to do is reconnect. And so I want to extend an invitation to you today. If you're here today, you know you're far away from God. If you're here today, you need to reconnect. If you're here today, you need a church. You need a pastor. The Lord, I want to thank you for visiting Resurrected Life Church family. We're so very glad that you joined us today to hear an encouraging word from the Lord. And I want you to know that anytime you're in the Chicagoland area, please feel free to stop in and worship with us. We would love to have you. The address and information is on the screen. Until then, this is Dr. Ray Allen Berryhill letting you know here at Resurrected Life Church, we're resurrecting lives and changing the world. Until next time. If you would like a copy of today's broadcast, please contact 773-286-0767 or go online at evangelchicago.org. Resurrected Life Church International would like to invite you out to our church services located at 4538 West Fullerton, Chicago, Illinois. Sunday services are held 8 and 10 a.m. for our English-speaking community and 1.30 p.m. for our Spanish-speaking community and on Wednesday at 7 p.m. We look forward to seeing you there. Learn more about our church and church family at evangelchicago.org today. Resurrected Life Church International. Reviving faith, reviving souls, restoring families, renewing communities, resurrecting lives, changing the world.